Hey, this is DJ Ideal and you're watching BPM Supreme TV. When did I start DJing? Apparently it was when I was 15, 16. Um, but I started listening to dance music when I was eight, nine years old. So um, there was a bit of a, a stretch between when I started listening to it, when I started actually even seeing what DJing was. To me, when I first started listening to the music, it, it was just music. I'd go to sleep and I'd be listening to the music, but I didn't know there was a party or a club or a rave or every other type of party that I've gotten to experience. Um, so I find that to be pretty interesting just because I got to appreciate the music side of it before I got to appreciate the party side of it, which tends to now go hand in hand. Um, yeah. And then what are my influences back then? <sighs> I used to listen to a DJ Richard Empty Vision a lot and a DJ Badwood Bill a lot. The, um, Badwood Bill was, used to incorporate a lot of turntablism into his house music and Richard Humpty Vision used to incorporate a lot of like effects and very quick mixing. Much what like hip hop turntablists do still today, you know? And I, I still like to incorporate things like that into my sets, which I feel stands out f based on what a lot of the present day DJs tend to just mix in and out. Unless they're using a lot of this cool new technology, which is allowing people to do some really cool stuff. <laughs> San Diego is just awesome. Um, it has the best weather possible, except for this weird stuff we're going through right now. Um, and the scene, I guess, when I got into it, when I turned 21, was not as big as it is right now. And I, for me personally, it was a cool um, way to be a part of the city. But I also looked for ways to, to reach out of the city. Like I always saw this to be bigger than just for San Diego. And, I didn't want to let my music stuff to just San Diego. And so um, I still think of San Diego as my home and I'm glad that my parents live here because I'll always be able to live here. But if I have to go overseas or to LA, then I'm open to it. But uh, San Diego is just cool. Since I was a little kid, you know, I, <clears throat> I fell in love with the music first and the DJing happened when I started being exposed to how the DJ controlled the vibe of wherever he's at. You know, whether you're a bar, bar mitzvah DJ or a big nightclub DJ or festival DJ, you're, you're in control of that energy there. And as, as a kid, I, I always, I felt like I was always like in my own little head when I had my own headphones and I was in charge of whatever I was doing. And so that's a really cool feeling. And I've had the opportunity of playing in front of like 10 people at a party and up to a few thousand and it's cool to be able to just feel that energy there within and you know try to find things that compare to those feelings and it's really hard and so unless I find something that's cooler than that uh, I don't think I'm gonna stop. <laughs> I would say every single one that I've had the opportunity to like collab or do something with, it has been either somebody that I used to look up to, who I will now say that I got to know, or close friends that I've been able to find a, a way to look at a project and be able to work together in a way that we're both happy. Um, you know, presently I have a music partner, Jaybreak, who I've been working with for five, six years, you know, and we're in the studio probably three, four times a week if we can. Um, I have my radio show partner, Tristan D. I've known him for four or five years and we've had a whole different side of music with radio and, and I've gotten to learn a lot from him and a lot of stuff that I've gotten to do with him, um, which is cool in a sense because I'm always wanting to keep learning. And, you know, I've, in the past year, I got to collaborate with a buddy, Thrill, who is a really good house LA producer. He's been doing some great stuff. And I want to be able to do that more with more people, but it, it's crazy to think of how much time everybody doesn't have, you know? 
I, I love to like say that I'm available as long as I'm awake because if I'm sleeping, that's the only time that I'm probably not working or focused on my music. In when I get to play either in Europe or like in Mexico or I've gotten to play in Canada or Dominican Republic, I feel like they're a little more open to hearing new things quicker. Uh, America is still trained to listen to certain playlists and listen to certain labels and which I get it, you know, it's part of the business and that's just how it goes. But I try, I try to at least throw in one or two songs every three or five songs that is either not new or not hot or not cool or whatever or charting just to like try and show people new sounds. Um, just this week I was thinking back to when I was a little kid um, and I was going through a lot of old CDs and Back then, all that stuff was always new. There just wasn't a way to like track, keep track of what was cool. And so I try to reflect that now to try and always try and play new things or try to play old things which are gonna be new to people of now. You know? What's the most challenging part of the DJ lifestyle? Um, not grasping onto the fact that it's a business. Now it's a business, you know, and for me, like, it probably took me some time to realize that, but that's because I wasn't in it for the business. I was in it just because I loved it and I was just having a good time and no matter where I could play, I would go play. And no matter what I could listen to and play, I would, I would, because I love all of the music, all the genres. And now in, in transitioning and thinking of what business has to be, you know, um, you have to, keep new, you have to keep relevant and you have to find ways to like reinvent yourself and keep it fresh and tap into all the things that are required of an artist now because unless you have a cool team behind you, not everybody starts that way and you have to do it all yourself and you know just like you're going to be your own graphic designer, you're going to be your own manager, your own janitor, you know. Um, it's, yeah, I think it's tapping into the fact that it's a business. So I've gotten to play at Ultra quite a few times already and um, what's my favorite part about festivals of that size? Yeah, it goes back to the energy that you get behind those festivals. Uh, I think it's really cool that the general population is now finally being able to be exposed to dance music in the way that it is. Uh, some call it commercialized, some calling selling it out. But you know, when I first started listening to dance music and playing it, I wasn't hoping to just play it for 10 people. I wanted the whole world to hear it. And so people are finally doing that. And to be able to see that many people loving whatever that sound is, whatever that genre is, and just all as one, just being in that moment of like, we're into this together, it's really cool for whatever it is, for whatever kind of, um, festival, you know, I've I've seen now hip hop festivals to dance music festivals. There's country festivals. They're all doing the same thing. So it's nice to finally see us being accepted in that way. Well, I, I recently decided to just go 100% with um, my music career and dropping my day job per se, and focusing only on my music projects. So the music projects are DJing, producing, um, the radio show that we've been doing on Energy 103.7 here in San Diego. Um, I've been writing for DJ Mag in Canada and I'm their dance music correspondent. So I get to go around the nation and tell people what's going on with dance music and the festivals. And I'm also doing music reviews for the magazine as well. And um, I'm a bit of a dance music correspondent also for NBC's San Diego. Um, just going to certain festivals, um, clubs, there's gonna be a lot of grand openings coming up soon, things like that that are catering to dance music. So I'm doing that. And um, there's a, a label thing that I'm working on as well. And just a few other things. Oh, and San Diego Pride. I'm uh, working at San Diego Pride's festival, which is the biggest dance music festival for San Diego, uh, which is coming up soon. <laughs>